This is Between the Brackets, a MediaWiki podcast, episode 1, February 6th, 2018. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Between the Brackets, a MediaWiki podcast. MediaWiki, for those of you who don't know, is the open source software best known for powering Wikipedia and its sister sites like Wiktionary, Wikiquote, um, and now Wikidata. And it was first developed in 2003 for use on Wikipedia. But it's also used by tens of thousands of companies, organizations, and so on. And I'm pretty sure it's the most popular wiki software in the world. My name is Yaron Koren. I, uh, I live in New Jersey in the United States, and I've lived in various places before, uh, including Israel, which is where my name's from. Um, I consider myself a computer programmer and a, a part-time entrepreneur. Um, and for the last 10 years, I've been doing almost exclusively MediaWiki-related work. Um, uh, if you've heard of me, it's probably for writing the book Working with MediaWiki, which uh, first came out in 2012 and which I've been updating since then. Uh, you can find it at workingwithmediawiki.com. That's a little plug. Um, and I think it's the only MediaWiki book that's come out since 2010. Um, I've also uh, developed a lot of MediaWiki extensions, I think around 15 of them, um, although I've done very little work on core MediaWiki. Uh, and uh, I've done some other things. I, I founded a MediaWiki consulting company called WikiWorks at wikiworks.com. That's another plug. Um, I'm still in charge of it, but I don't run it day to day. Um, because, uh, last year I took a job at, uh, Genesis, uh, a company based in San Francisco that I now work for full time, uh, remotely. And there I do MediaWiki related work, uh, extension development and that sort of thing for their internal use. <clears throat> so that's me. Um, I, uh, decided to, um, create a podcast for MediaWiki because there wasn't one. I, I, MediaWiki, for some reason, always um, always gets sort of short shrift compared to other open source software that has a similar volume of usage. I mean, there's a ton of... Uh, I looked around, there's, there's a, a ton of Drupal podcasts. There's like 50 WordPress podcasts. Um, Somehow there's nothing for MediaWiki. Um, so I guess, I mean, there's various reasons why I wanted to do this podcast, but, but I guess the overriding reason is that just no one else was doing it, which is sort of the same reason I wrote the book. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, this podcast, I'm, I'm planning to, to do, uh, one-on-one -on -one interviews with, uh, the various people in the uh, MediaWiki development and user community. And by users, I mean people running and maintaining their own MediaWiki instances. Um, I'm not planning to do, uh, you know, technical assistance, like how to edit a wiki and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm not really planning to do, you know, news style reporting, like, you know, MediaWiki 1.32 has just come out and here are the cool features. And although stuff like that might, end up showing up. Um, I think it's uh, a fascinating um, for MediaWiki specifically because it's really in two separate worlds. Uh, one is Wikipedia and related sites, and the other is companies and organizations, or um, what's, no, what's sometimes known as enterprise MediaWiki, which is a term I am trying to help popularize. Um, the latter one, in Enterprise Media Wiki, is more interesting to me personally, but I'm well aware that its use on Wikipedia is much, much more important than uh, its use on any of those, uh, any other sites or all other sites combined, I guess. Um, so I'm hoping to get a mix of people uh, in this podcast from the Wikipedia and Wikimedia world and the Enterprise Media Wiki worlds. Um, and uh, I think that's a good introduction to. My very first guest, um, uh, I, I don't think there's a better 
uh, choice for uh, first guest for this podcast than uh, Cindy Chickalese, who is uh, fairly unique uh, in having a foot in both camps because she's done both Enterprise MediaWiki usage and development and now core MediaWiki development. Um, so, uh, uh, Cindy Chickalese, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, Great. Uh, oh, act, uh, let, let me uh, give you a brief intro and, and please correct any of this if, uh, if it's uh, incorrect. Um, sure. Um, Cindy got her start with MediaWiki working for uh, MITRE, which is a, uh, a it's it's a, a very large company that turns out to be actually a nonprofit company, uh, which is odd, uh, given how much money they have. Um, they do uh, research for the government. Uh, and there she had the title of Principal Software Systems Engineer. Uh, last year, she left that job to work at the Wikimedia Foundation, where she has the title of Product Owner for the MediaWiki Platform Team. Product Manager. Oh, Product Manager. Well, somebody mm -hmm. has to update the, the page on MediaWiki.org. Okay. Ooh. All right. We, we've, we will have at least one productive thing come out of this. <laughs> Action item podcast. number one. Yeah. Um, and uh, and like me, she works from home. Uh, so uh, so is that okay? Other than the product, other than your title, does is that sound accurate? Seems pretty accurate, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so uh, let's start at the beginning. Uh, well, not at the beginning from our perspective. Uh, uh, how, when did you get started at Mitre? Um, oh, well, that's actually a more complicated question than you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> I worked at MITRE for 15 years, um, just shy of 15 years, but um, it was split into two uh, two visits to MITRE. Um, I was there for almost five years initially and then left to go to a um, MITRE-inspired startup for a couple of years um, and then another MITRE-inspired startup for a couple of years. And then I actually taught. Um, uh, I was a college professor for almost eight years at Marymount University, just enough time to get um, tenure, and then um, left to return to MITRE for almost another 10 years, at which point I became involved in some robotics work, large unmanned ground vehicles, and um, they were using a wiki as sort of an engineer's notebook and to track all aspects of the robotics work um, it was a project they had a couple of years prior competed in the DARPA Grand Challenge um, with a large converted um, Ford Explorer pickup truck that was autonomous and um, worked on the robotics project for a couple of years, actually doing um, work on a embedded controller, writing code in ADA, of all things, but got really interested in the wiki and um, transitioned to um, supporting the wiki program within MITRE which was um, supporting a whole range of different gover government customers in their use uh, with, of wikis for knowledge management. Uh, what year was that around when you got, when uh, they got, um, I returned to MITRE in 2007. Okay. Yeah. So I was there for almost um, 10 years before leaving to join the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and uh, you were heavily involved in uh, developing new media wiki extensions at MITRE um, yes. Was that had that started before you joined, or was that your uh, initiative? Um, there had been some um, extensions that were developed um, before I joined the team. Um, there, ha they had been a lot of work was done, uh, you know. I, I say behind the firewall, you know, I inside MITRE. Um, and for the first few years that um, after I joined the project, we continued to. Uh, work on developing extensions, but we did not interact really yet with the open source community. So, um, so yes, yeah, some, some of the extensions that I worked with, early prototypical versions had been developed, um, before I came on board. And then I worked, you know, to further them and to create new extensions. And then we got to a point where we had, um, enough that we developed. And I also worked on, on genericizing them, making them so they would work in other environments, not just MITRE, because it seemed like it would be useful to, um, to have that, to, you know, to have them benefit other people as well. 
Um, right. And then I became involved in a project that um, we were developing a wiki and um, for a government customer. And the way MITRE works, it's a, it's a federally funded research and development center. Um, we, um, I still say we, <laughs> I was there for a long time. Um, so the, the kinds of um, projects that we would get involved in were typically advising the government. We, we didn't bid on work. We're um, chartered by Congress um, to help out as an honest broker to advise the government um, in their use of technology and, um, you know, sometimes it, to help out with their interactions with, um, other government contractors. So, um, so we had developed, we were developing a wiki that we were going to transition to the government. Um, but there was a concern, well, you know, what happens with all of this MITRE developed code, um, you know, which obviously the government would be, would have free use of afterwards, but who was going to maintain it and how were they going to maintain it? After um, after the wiki transitioned um, out of prototypical state to, you know, being used by the government. Um, so I I decided at that point that the best thing to do would be to open source these extensions so that um, other folks could to contribute, that the um, government customer could continue using it um, and developing and, um, you know, having the benefit of future enhancements. Um going forward after um, we were no longer involved in that particular contract. And that was the beginning of our open source days. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, how many extensions did you uh, did you release or were, were in use uh, by the end? I want to say that I want to say that so there's a, a category on mediawiki.org called extensions by MITRE. Um, and I want to say there's something like 16 extensions in there at this point. Um, nice. Yeah. And, and a couple of those, uh, two of them were extensions that had been developed by other people previously that, um, that had been abandoned that we took ownership of. And, um, in both cases did, re- you know, really substantial, um, rewrites to, to, um, bring them up to, um, to modern interactions with, you know, with the MediaWiki software as well as other um, environmental stuff. So, you know, so but, you know, and then the others were things that folks on my team um, developed. Um, I had a hand in almost all of them, um, and many of them I, that I developed um, from scratch. But yeah, you know, but the whole the whole suite is something about 16, 16 extensions. Um, you had a very extensive use of MediaWiki at MITRE. Um, uh, mm-hmm. There were uh, how many wikis uh, oh. would, did you have? <laughs> dozens yeah. and dozens. I want to say yeah. something. You know, at w- one point now, n- not we had an interesting life cycle of which, as I said, we we developed things sort of prototypically first and then handed them off. Um, you know, and so sometimes we would develop a wiki that we would. Um, you know, experiment with, and then it would no longer, um, be useful. Um, but others had much longer life, like the wiki that I started on, um, Robopedia that existed before I joined the project in 2007 and is still in use to this day. But at one point we counted something like over 70 extent, uh, um, um, wikis that we had created. Um, you know, some of which are still in use, others not. The first wiki that was um, that was widely used at MITRE actually um, was originally created by a different team, um, and that's MITREpedia. And that's um, sort of a general wiki that anybody can add a page to about any topic um, that's useful to MITRE, and it's got quite a bit of um, content in it. Um, and, um, you know, it's been written about a few times. Um you know, so Miterpedia still exists as well. Um, my team wound up taking over Miterpedia when the original team moved on to other work. And so it became a suite of our, um, what we called the Gestalt extensions, which, um, you know, was sort of the, our branded name for our, our team. Um, you know, it was started by Bernadette Clemente, um, actually before I joined the project. And, um, yeah, and still continues to this day. Yeah. Um, and, all of these extensions, all of these wikis used Semantic Media Wiki also, or most of them? Um, MITRE P- well, actually, no, MITREpedia does have it loaded at this point. Um, some, of, Many of the ones that we developed, and we sort of developed a methodology for creating wikis that I can talk about a little bit 
But, um, uh, you know, many of them did use either semantic media wiki. We did um, create a couple cargo wikis as well towards the end of my tenure there. Um, but um, MITRE MITR PDA did not initially use um, semantic media wiki, although it does have some pages in there that do at this point. Um, but but other wikis that we divide, des designed from the ground up um, to use semantic media wiki, um, you, you know, we had approach. I'd, I'd be happy to talk about that a bit if you want now or whenever it's convenient. Uh, yeah, this would be a good time. Sure, go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, what we found was that for adopt for the adoption of a wiki um, to manage the the content, the knowledge um, of a particular um group, a community, um, an organization, um, it, we found it useful to have, uh, to do a bit of a semantic modeling um, activity first to um, figure out what their first class objects are, how they, how they would be used to create, you know, a framework, something for their, them to hang their content on. Um, when, we found that if we just, you know, threw up a wiki and said, go forth and wiki, um, you know, it, it, you, everybody has sort of that blank page problem. They look at it and go, well, what do I write? You know, how do I, sure. you know, where do I start? And you can also wind up sort of with a bit of a wild west of information. Um, you know, it's not structured. It's not easy to find things. Um, so yeah. we would go in and, um, using, um, this wonderful software, um, that, um, that used to be called semantic forms and is now called page forms. Um, we would design a form. Um, to for the user to capture information about a particular concept, um, and the forms go with templates, and um, and we would add a name set is for each first class type of entity, um, and that and through the use of for the form, which would capture the fields, and the fields would then be saved in semantic properties using semantic media wiki. Um, it was very easy for users to just come to the wiki see concepts that they were familiar with. Oh, look, there's a person. Oh, look, there's a robot. There's a, you know, a piece of equipment and just fill in forms to enter information. Um, and then, you know, there would be some free form um, wiki text areas as well for folks to add further information. And, um, you know, different types of wikis would have um, different types of um, content that they would need. You know, on the robotics wiki, there were some very math heavy pages that would um, use extensions to um, support adding mathematical formulas. Um, so, um, so this, we found that this, um, you know, approach to creating um, a model first would help very much in um, the engagement of users and the adoption of, of the wikis within a group. Um, the other thing that we found that was really necessary for adoption was to have a really strong advocate within the community organization who would tell people to, um, you know, anything you do needs to go in the wiki. <laughs> and, um, and, and you'd find that the content would start to grow. And the interesting thing is that when, when you have this approach to having all of your, your information organized and semantically tagged, you then are able to query it and your, your, your wiki becomes a, a huge database of, of content about your, about your community, about your area, um, your, your topic, whatever your topic ha happens to be, happens to be. And then you can start querying it and using different result formats, displaying it in different ways. And we found that, um, that our communities, our customers would actually find out information about their, um, their organization, their content, um, their knowledge that sometimes they didn't even realize that they didn't know um, that was sort of emergent information based on the ability to be able to look at it in different dimensions um, once, you know, once the content started to grow. So so that was our approach to building wikis. And, you know, we found it to be very successful. We find that MediaWiki as software um was with the use of a variety of enterprise extensions was very, very um, helpful and supportive and unique in its ability to um, to support this type of activity. The other thing that we found that's that's very um, a, a very nice approach to the fact that you define the semantic model 
in Wikitext in your wiki is that it's very agile and adaptable to change. So we changed um, our view of, you know, what the semantic model should be, for example, in, in the Robopedia or robotics wiki many times over the course of, of um, the years of which it's been in use. And we were able to um, very easily sort of behind, behind the scenes make changes to the model and um, have the content adapt to that new model and um, in place. And some of that involved, you know, doing some, you know, Python scripting in the back to actually, you know, pull the content of wiki pages, you know, change it using some regular expressions and right. uh, manipulation and saving it back to the wiki. And it was very, very um, adaptable to this type of approach. So, yeah. Well, this is all very, very good. And I hope anyone who is, uh, running or thinking of running a, an internal media wiki instance is taking notes. <laughs> um, um, actually that, that leads to an interesting question, which is, um, I assume at MITRE, uh, money was m more or less no object. I mean, it, it wasn't the fact that media wiki was free to use that was the big selling point for it. Um, I, I wonder, I just wonder if you or anyone else there was, you know, thinking of, of looked into switching to other, you know, proprietary software and, um, now, you know, whether there was any, uh, uh, yeah, discussion about that. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily that money was no object. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a nonprofit after all. Um, and, well, I visited uh, the office. That was the sense I got. But uh. <laughs> uh, well, it, it is yes. The offices are lovely, and you you visited the brand new building that had just opened, so um, it was really developed with um, you know state of the art in mind. Um, but also is a is a green building. You know, what do they say? LEED certified. Wow. Not sure if that's the appropriate terminology. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, they did a beautiful job. Um, but that's not necessarily because um, they're rolling in money. They are careful at how they spend it. Okay. Um, but uh, but want to have you know supportive facilities for the type of work that they're doing. Um, so, but the um, most of our customers are government co government customers, and as um, in the role as as an advisor for the government, want to make best use of the taxpayers' money. And so, open source software um, is a very good way to do that. Um, so. Yes, you know, we, we looked at, well, we, not only did we look at other options, um, and found that we didn't have the flexibility and the capability, um, um, that they did not provide the flexibility as, um, that we wanted to be able to have for our knowledge management needs. Um, you know, often we would ha indeed have customers come in because they already, had um, SharePoint um, in house that you know can't you do this in SharePoint and no you right. know the types of things that I just described um, would be very difficult to do would not be it would be more rigid and um, not as adaptable um, to custom modeling and very difficult you know you have to have you know some pretty trained people to really understand how to uh, to manage a SharePoint site well um, we also have folks who um, you know, they already have Atlassian products. They have Jira in-house, and well, can't we do this in, in Confluence? And, um, you know, the same thing as far as, uh, to my knowledge, there are not extensions um, that give you the power of semantic media wiki and page forms um, within that environment um, that, that allow you to build this, this data model to, um, to structure your content and um, support you know, the fact that it, it really becomes, you know, a large database that's queryable and visualizable in different ways. Um, so, so we did not find that there were, um, uh, that even if we did have, you know, money to burn, there were not com comparable products that could, um, adequately do what we wanted to do. Fantastic. Um, uh, so I, I guess that brings us to, um, to, uh, I think July of last year, yep. when you uh, decided to to um, take the plunge, I guess, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, I guess the 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 next obvious step for someone who who likes MediaWiki 
uh, is to go actually work on it. Um, yep. uh, well, uh, yeah, can you explain to some extent, I guess, the, the, the process or the thinking behind uh, going to work for the, the, the Wikimedia Foundation? Sure. Um, well, you know, the first thing is I was not looking to leave MITRE. I loved what I did. I loved working with MediaWiki. I, hel- I loved helping our government customers. Um, but I did see um, a job posting <laughs> for uh, looking for a product manager for the MediaWiki platform itself. And as you can probably tell already, I'm pretty passionate about the MediaWiki software. I think it's amazing software. You know, the fact that um, it powers Wikipedia which is, you know, a wonderful knowledge resource for the world, um, is amazing. But it was written in a way to be flexible enough so that it could also, and, you know, um, provided as open source so that it could obviously be used by other folks as well. And um, we were able to at MITRE, and I know a number of other people, including yourself, have been able to use MediaWiki for a whole host of different types of environments and applications to um, to support knowledge management, and yeah. and it's um, so I was I I saw the opportunity to help um, to guide the future of MediaWiki as the product manager for the software, um, and one of the things that I believe is that you know MediaWiki could have even greater reach, even greater market share than it does at this point um, if a few fundamental things were to happen, if it were easier to install, upgrade, and maintain. Um, and if there were, um, you know, one of the, one of the um, things that was, uh, that was a, that is a goal of my position is to really define the roadmap of MediaWiki for the future. And that's something that the third party community had been, uh, you know, those using MediaWiki outside of the Wikimedia Foundation had been asking for for quite a while, myself included. Where's the roadmap? You know, we need a roadmap. (laughs) You know, I needed to be able to tell my customers when I was advising my government customers to use MediaWiki. You know, they're like, okay, well, where will it be in five years? Is there going to be support? Is there going to be um, you know, I'm going to still be able to run it on my hardware. And um, because very rightly so, you know, MediaWiki was is is um, supported within the Wikimedia Foundation primarily for its use in Wikipedia, because that's what it was developed for in Wikipedia by itself. If MediaWiki were only used for Wikipedia, it would be wonderful software and it would, you know, absolutely, you know, <laughs> be right in the world. Right. But but there's an opportunity for more environments to share more knowledge with the world through the use of this wonderful software system. So, um, you know, and I would like to see that happen. I would like to see more people be able to benefit from MediaWiki. And the more people that use the software and take different paths and avenues through the software, the more robust it becomes for for its support of Wikipedia as well. Sure. Yeah. And so I think that there can only be benefit in um, having a wider use of the software. So I was really very excited um, at the opportunity to join the foundation and to serve in that role. Um, and the um, you know so the future of MediaWiki is something that we're very much um, discussing right now at the foundation. We're at the beginning of a, of a project where um, we're looking at addressing the architecture and um, and making decisions um, on the future. And it's important that that th- these architectural decisions consider also um, other users of MediaWiki as well as Wikipedia. And there are folks within the foundation absolutely who support that idea as well. So. Um, so it's great. I've been very happy. And what I found in, in my years at MITRE working with MediaWiki was my, my work was really twofold. It was that, uh, that portion which was, um, was supporting the customers using MediaWiki, but also I became more and more involved in the MediaWiki open source community. And, um, and right. so that was sort of a natural extension into the foundation, um, in that role as a steward of the open source software. Yeah. So that's interesting, actually. I'm, I'm wondering about the cause and effect of that. Uh, you know, 
do you feel like um, supporting outside usage is, is something that you're pushing for uh, and, and something that, that made you want to, uh, in part, want to do this? Or is that something they were already looking for and, and so you felt like you'd be a good fit uh, for that sort of uh, I think it was thing? It, it was absolutely a combination of the two. There are definitely people within the foundation who have um, have seen the use of MediaWiki and support the use of MediaWiki in other environments. And um, so that was already there. Um, but but there's st- but there's still certain limitations. You know, the fo- the main focus has been, as I said, and should be on on Wikipedia. But um, but there are opportunities, I think. Um, with my f- insight from having actually developed wikis for a multitude of third party um, um, environments and customers, I think I bring something into the foundation um, to sort of remind them of of other uses and to get, be able to give fresh examples of other uses. And um, so I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so uh, as product manager. What are you, uh, what are you responsible for? What's your basic, you know, set of, um, responsibilities? Um, you know, I've got, I wear a number of different hats. <laughs> um, and one of those, you know, the primary one as, as product matter, matter, product manager for the MediaWiki platform team, um, as, um, as there are requests for, um, use of the resources of the team, you know, for the time of the developers that make up the team. Um, I help to prioritize and um, decide what are the um, key, you know, short-term priorities as well as sort of doing some long-term strategic planning from the direction that we want to be able to go to um, support the the MediaWiki platform. So, um, so there's, you know, the day-to-day tasks of just sort of, you know, checking, you know, the um, task board and seeing, you know, what what tasks, you know, folks have had that want help from the MediaWiki platform team, speaking to lots of different product managers um, across the foundation for needs that they have for the MediaWiki platform team, um, as well as participating. Um, we have a working group that's going on right now to um assess what um, the um, plan is for the next um, three to five years for um, the evolution of the MediaWiki platform. And so a lot of um, planning and strategic um, thinking towards that. I also have a part of my role um, that I agreed to support um, some interactions with third party community. So specifically, um, you know, making sure that there are channels of communication. Um, I, I was, you know, I don't think we've spoken yet about the MediaWiki stakeholders group, but it's a, it's a, um, a affiliate organization, um, you know, chartered or uh, recognized by the Wikimedia Foundation that was started, um, by, um, some folks outside the foundation, Mark Hirschberger, Marcus Glazer, um, started it up and I joined, um, relatively early on, um, so the MediaWiki stakeholders group, you know, has a monthly meeting that folks um, join up and um, talk about issues of the use of MediaWiki um, outside the foundation. Um, so I still regularly attend that and try and be a conduit of information between the stakeholders group and um, and the foundation. Um, and there are a number of different other, you know, I, I attend. Um, I just attended in October the Semantic MediaWiki conference. Um, I'm helping out in preparation for the next enterprise media wiki conference i actually chaired the last one which is when you got to visit lighter um last yeah. uh, last year um in in virginia but the their the next enterprise media wiki conference is coming up towards the end of mark in houston and we're very excited about that um and there you mm-hmm. know other things there's a there's a monthly telecon of um, federal government users of media wiki that i try to participate in um as often as possible. So, you know, so that's another aspect of my role is trying to keep open these channels of communication. And, um, if anybody, um, you know, has any questions, wants to reach out to me, um, they can definitely do so. Um, 
you know, I'm happy. You know, I periodically do get folks from different companies who um, are interested in using MediaWiki or um, have input how they'd like to see MediaWiki evolve. That reach out to me, and I'm happy to happy to speak to them about their use of MediaWiki. Oh, very good, and, and thank you for all those plugs. Uh, <laughs> by the way, what was that um, MediaWiki stakeholders group SMWCon, EMWCon, and yep. the uh, the I, I, the last one I, I I didn't really know about the the government uh, conference call. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, I'll I'll try to put links to all of those in the uh, in the description for this uh, podcast. Excellent. So people can find out. Um. Once I get the the link for the last one from you. Um, sure. Um. Uh. And I have to say I. Uh, uh, you know, from the perspective of the the, the MediaWiki stakeholders group, that's a pretty big uh, get for them to to get one of their members uh, now running the, <laughs> the MediaWiki. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually the second. I'm actually the second member of the MediaWiki stakeholders group to join the foundation uh, about oh. about a year prior to me. Um, right. Chris Warner, who was the chair of the Semantic Media Wiki, or yeah, it was Semantic Media Wiki conference at that point um, in St. Louis. He joined the foundation prior to my joining, so. Yeah, 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 and Chris Kerner is also a a, a regular attendee of um, EMWCon and yep. SMWCon. Um. Uh. So um. Uh. Well, let's see. So you so. Does that involve does that involve just core media wiki, or are you also involved in uh, in the you know Wikimedia, wiki. Wikimedia Foundation, I uh, almost tripped up there, extensions like Visual Editor and so forth? Um, no, it is – the MediaWiki platform team is responsible for um, core MediaWiki. Um, so um, there are other groups that are res- that are responsible for the different – what they call products on top of MediaWiki core. So so my um, primary responsibility is, is MediaWiki core. Um, although the, um, you know, the, the, it's sometimes it can be difficult to, for some things it's clear, you know, the, the, you know, when there's an extension like visual editor, it's clear where, where visual editor leads off and, and core starts. Although that, then you've got, um, um, you know, communication through, for example, the parser. Right. Um, so, um, you know, so there are times that it's not always crystal clear which team is responsible for which part, but you know, that's something that's, um, that's negotiated, worked out based upon the skills of the people on the different teams. Yeah. But yeah, my, my team's primary responsibility is, um, the media wiki platform. Um, and, and we're involved in a number of, of, of projects at this point. Um, as I said, you know, looking at the future, um, but also, um, right now in active development, we're contributing to, a project called um, multi-content revisions, which oh, yeah. is uh, which is a um, a the technical or one of the technical components of a larger project called structured data on commons, um, and the idea being that um, that within the Wikimedia Commons, which is a large resp- uh, repository of um, of uh, free, openly available. Um, imagery videos and, and the like um, uh, multimedia um, there the, there's a, a a project in place to try and add more queryable structured data to um, all of those artifacts within Wikimedia Commons and so the multi-content revisions um, work is actually working in support of that to um, right now um, each revision of a page in uh, Wikipedia, in MediaWiki, each page has wiki text content. The idea is that to add additional slots, optional slots that could have other data. So um, in the case of um, structured data on commons, there will be another slot that contains JSON information that um, is the metadata about the um, imagery or files that are stored on um Wikimedia Commons. So, um, you know, this is very exciting to me because this is bringing the idea of having structured data right into 
MediaWiki course, the things that are most valuable about um, Semantic MediaWiki and Cargo um, in being able to have data, um, queryable data within the page of a wiki is going to um, be able to be supported as a first class um, part of core. So I'm very yeah. excited about that project and it's in development right now. Um, and um, we'll be rolling out over the next months. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I mean, uh, not to get bogged down into, into this uh, technical stuff. Um, uh, I, I do think it's great uh, that they're going in that direction, although I, maybe you can explain this. I, I, I found it odd that it's per revision and not per page. Um, I mean, meaning that you can, you know, you can query what the data looked like, you know, two years ago or something, which seems unnecessary to me. I don't know. Do you know the thinking behind that? Um, well, I'm not sure that there, the intent is to be able to query old revisions. Um, but it's more that, uh, well, for example, if you, if you were to look at a page that had semantic properties on it, a, a page, um, that stored, um, Right, like an info box or something that, right. that's, that's, that's queryable. Past revisions would have those values. They just wouldn't be queryable in the current system. Um, and again, I don't know that there is any intention um, to be able to query that structured data on older revisions. But I think it's more to the point. So right now, if you were using Semantic Media Wiki, for example, or, or Cargo, and if you looked at the wiki text of a page, you would see the template call that had the parameters that were the values that would eventually be saved as um, as properties. And so from that wiki text, you could you could theoretically reconstruct right. what the data were were on past revisions of that page. And and really, this is sort of the same type of idea that you have um you have the wiki talk text, you've got these additional slots, which you could think of as those template parameters that are stored. It's just they break it apart into different slots. And um, and the, the, I think that the main querying would still be on the active slot. I, I think I get it. So you're saying it's not that there's some massive additional database table that's holding all this data for every revision. It's just... The structure exists so that any you could recreate the the data for any revision. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Well, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It seems really. Um, it seems like one of those things. Well, I guess like Semantic Media Wiki or Cargo, or maybe the uh, Media Wiki's page props table, where it's like a a pretty generic thing that can really get used for a lot of things. Is that. Is that your dog I hear? Yeah, that is my dog. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Say a, hi to Amber. A special guest. Oh, Amber. Yes. Yeah, she guess. gets a special guest pod on, this, on the podcast. Yeah. So the, so the one other thing is that um, this, um, you know, for the Structured Data and Commons project, the um, technology that will be used to um, handle this additional slot of data is Wikibase. Um, and Wikibase is the base technology of um, the Wikidata project, which is another fabulous project that has been um, created um, under the Wikimedia umbrella and um, that Wikimedia Deutschland is, has the primary responsibility for. Oh, and, very interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. And actually, Wikibase uses some code from Semantic Media Wiki. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah, the the original the original tent was, and somebody corrected me recently and said, you know, because I I was saying, oh, do you know Semantic Media Wiki and and Wikibase have the same, you know, and I I don't know that there is actually any real code reuse at this point, but the oh, okay. origins of the origins of the two um, were were related. They came from the same, um, they had the same genesis. Yeah, sure, absolutely. It's like um, it's like the proto. Uh, what is it like for for dinosaurs and so forth? As the right, exactly. The one, uh, and and the, the 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 real difference up to now between wiki data and semantic media wiki. Well, from my perspective, there's lots and lots of differences, obviously. But but one of the key differences from my perspective is that um, wiki data itself is a separate wiki, so the data is stored separately from the 
wiki de- wiki text content about whatever you know re- that refers then to these data uh, pieces that are, are within the uh, Wikidata repository, and that makes a lot of sense for Wikipedia, but maybe not so much sense for some enterprise wikis. Although sure. within the enterprise world, you can definitely stand up your own instance of Wikibase and use that. But um, for many of the environments that I was working in, um, the ability to actually store structured data in the page about the entity to which you were, that you were discussing um, was was very powerful and also you know less overhead from, you know, the management of an additional repository and the like. So, you know, it really depends upon your environment that, you know, both are really, you know, very valid models depending upon what it is you're trying to do. Sure. Yeah. And now I guess there's a third model with the, uh, with the, 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 uh, multi, multi content okay. revisions. Uh, but yeah, yeah. We'll see how that, uh, pans out. It should be mm-hmm. interesting. Um, yep. uh, Back to slightly less technical stuff. You just got back from uh, from San Francisco for the the Wikimedia de- the annual Wikimedia Development Summit. Developer uh, Summit, yeah. Oh, Developer Summit. Um, and you also had meetings, uh, I guess, uh, uh, at, uh, with the Wikimedia Foundation people. Yep. Later on. All hands. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How did the How did the Developer Summit go? Um, the development summit was, um, you know, it was a great opportunity to get together with um, folks with an interest in um, the development of the MediaWiki software and the, C- the MediaWiki ecosystem. Um, it went great. We had, you know, um, four fabulous, um, interesting keynote speakers, as well as eight technical sessions that we broke up. Um, I was a uh, co-leader of the technical session on supporting the third party media wiki community, which um, was, you know, we had a really great discussion and some action items coming out of it. Um, one of the things is that um, the media wiki stakeholders group, we need to uh, several years ago, a survey was done of um, third party users of, of media wiki to find out what their um, use cases were and their needs and their interests uh, and I think it's time to repeat that survey and to get more information about how folks install MediaWiki, how they would like to install it in the future. And, you know, I'm not sure, um, and maybe this podcast can help. Um, you know, I don't know that we really reached, you know, we reached as many people as we could, but I'd like to see if we could try and reach even further into the community. Are there folks that we don't know about yet who, right. um, who are using MediaWiki in different ways? And um, and we'd love to, you know, be able to get input from a wide variety of different, um, you know, how many people are using MediaWiki, for example, in a shared hosting environment, um, you know, who don't have um, command line access to um, in order to manage and install the software. Um, we need to find out the answers to questions like that and, um, you know, to really see what what the reach, what the what the typical use case is and what the, you know, also the the range of different types of use cases are for the software. So that was one of the things that came out of that session. Yeah. Um, there was also an architecture session that was great. So, you know, it was, it was a wonderful meeting, a wonderful opportunity. Um, you know, the, a lot of the um, foundation employees are, you know, we, we work remotely, we're distributed around the world. And, um, and then of course there are the other, you know, there were folks from the third party community who participated as well. Um, and, and other users of MediaWiki. So as, as wonderful, and, and I'm sure you can attest to this, as wonderful it is, as it is to be able to work remotely and, um, you know, enjoy the comfort of your own home and avoid a commute. <laughs> and yeah. the diversity also that it brings to the work base to be able to have folks from around the world participating is great. But there's nothing like an occasional face-to-face meeting to actually, you know, <clears throat> be able to, you know, rapidly hammer out. Um, solutions to problems and, and discuss and, and to bond also and build relationships. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. so yeah, having the developer summit and then the all hands, which is also an opportunity to bring um, the employees of the foundation together in one place. Both were really, you know, an amazing experience. It was my first all hands, my fourth developer summit, but my, my first all hands. And it was a great experience. Yeah. Okay. And I guess that was the first time you, you met, 
some of the people you now work with? Yeah. <laughs> Although, you know, I'd, I'd, met, I'd met or been in the room well, with yeah, okay, right. a number of people, you know, through four developer summits. Right. But but there were definitely also people that um, that I had never met face to face before, so it was a great opportunity to do that. Um, yeah, it's 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 sort of strange when um, you interact with folks primarily online and then you meet them at first time in person, and you know they're not the the height that you expected or the, yeah, sure. <laughs> whatever. <Sure. laughs> it's like wow, you know. So you sort of develop a mental image, you know, based upon um, their their image or you know a fuzzy video. Um, picture. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's great to actually meet people. Um, I, as I said, there, there's really no substitute for occasionally having a face to face. Yeah, sure. And yeah. And, you know, there's the people who can come off uh, caustic uh, online, but then end up being really nice in person. Right, in person absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I guess that that ties into to one one thing I was wondering about. I, I mean, I, I wasn't there at the the developer summit, but I looked through the um, the topics being discussed and so forth. Um, one theme that struck out to me, maybe just because that's the kind of thing I'm in, uh, interested in, in, is the um, is you know the the issue of uh, of volunteer development and bringing in more developers. Um, you know that uh, that's a that's a problem that a lot of open source uh, projects have that are run by a central organization. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, WordPress has that same problem, and and mm-hmm. and a, a lot of other projects do too. Which is you have your paid staff, and then you ha- you have your set of volunteers, and the question is how to how to keep the volunteers motivated and how to keep them you know in the loop um, without. Um, y- you know, while well, still trying to keep some some semblance of uh, of control and uh, structure yeah. to the whole thing. Yeah, it's uh, a balance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we, there was at least one discussion about. Were you involved in that at all? Mm-hmm. I mean. <clears throat> yeah, growing growing the developer community. Um, yeah, and it turns out, you know, there was. Um, we looked at some numbers for the last year of. Um, the code now not all MediaWiki st- extensions have to be or are um, housed on Garrett, which is the um, repository um, system that that MediaWiki Core um, resides in. But uh, but quite a few, quite a few of the extensions actually um, live within Garrett. And um, you know there was um, we pulled some figures from that and. We found that, you know, although the foundation did, you know, more than half, I want to say, and I, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but I, it was 75%, I believe, of the um, commits to MediaWiki Core were done by Wikimedia Foundation staff. But that means that a right. quarter of them were not. They were right. done by other folks from within the community. Um, and, and the figure goes much higher as far as the um, – is the contribution of third-party developers to the extensions, which makes sense because yeah. um, because the extensions, many of them are created for um, third-party use. And uh, it, it, many for the foundation as well, but it makes sense that it would be more of a balance. Um, yeah. So, um, but the idea is how, you know, how can we engage, engage the volunteer community even more? And so, um, yeah, there was a discussion about that and, um, uh, there was another discussion also about having, um, you know, more um, input into upstream, uh, you know, other open source projects as well and contributing to them. You know, it, you know, if we want um, to have more contributors to to MediaWiki, we you know also need to be aware that we need to be supporting the software that we ourselves use as libraries and the like that are that are provided as open source. <laughs> but, yeah, there was definitely yeah. a discussion about growing the community and um it's definitely a desire to have that because there are all sorts of benefits of, you know, just like having MediaWiki itself used by in more environments. Having more eyes on the code is always a good thing. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Um yeah, very good and and I, I I guess you're you're sort of the role model in that respect or one of them as far as you know people starting out doing uh, third party usage and development and uh moving right into uh <laughs> media wiki 
Um, mm-hmm. Although I'm not, I'm not actually doing um, any software development at this point as part of my day job. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, was, I wanted to ask about that too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My, so yeah, my role is is primarily at doing product management and you know, you know, more the vision and the strategy, um, and of the software as opposed to actually having a hand in the code. Um, but that being said, I'm still a very active volunteer developer within the MediaWiki community. So the ah. those ex, those extensions that I developed. Um, while I was at MITRE that were open sourced, I continue to maintain. So um, they are still actively developed and maintained okay. by me on the weekends and evenings. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That's great. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, talking to you about it and, and you weren't sure whether you'd have time for it. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, probably not as much time as I did in the past, but I've still been able to push out some, um, some uh, pretty good. Um, uh, either bug fixes or new functionality to some of the extensions. Um, that, include, that, that includes do. extensions for uh, authentication, authorization, that kind of stuff? Yeah, I developed um, Pluggable Auth, which is basically glue code between the MediaWiki authentication infrastructure that allows you to bring in um, third-party authentication systems. So I developed for Pluggable Auth um, an OpenID Connect and simple ML PHP um, plugins for authentication as well as a couple um, authorization plugins, um, so email authorization, LDAP authorization, um, and that's sort of key to the difference between um, how authentication is happen- happens on Wikipedia. Wikipedia, you create an account and you're in. Um, well, in many enterprise systems, you use some sort of enterprise authentication system that knows who you are and you can prove, authenticate to that system um, prove that you who you are, but not all wikis within an enterprise should be accessible to all of the people who can prove that they are who they are to that enterprise. Right. And so the so the idea behind pluggable auth is there's really two steps. First, you authenticate, you prove who you are with an enterprise authentication system, and then um, it, there's an optional step of of authorization, saying okay, but are you allowed to use this wiki? So. So that's one suite of wiki of extensions that I created. There's also yeah. um, the display title extension that gets quite a bit of use that allows you to have, um, you know, a sort of generic, like a numerical page name, but then um, have a property, um, a page property, um, some text that is actually a human readable name for that page. Um, and then that can actually yeah. link text elsewhere in the, in the wiki for that. So I still actively maintain display title. Um, and then there's a bunch of other things. There's a commenting system called com- comment streams that was erect- originally um, implemented by um, one of my team members, Jason G. And then he went on um, to another job and I've taken over um, maintenance of that extension. Gosh, it sounds like you haven't really left your previous job at the percent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm still, that, I guess that's the benefit of open source, you know, just like, um, you know, that previous customer of ours who was saying, well, who's going to maintain the software afterwards when MITRE is no longer involved? Um, you know, that's the great benefit. And MITRE still uses these extensions and still gets the benefits of yeah. of um, my my hobby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. No, I, I definitely agree that that's a that's a, a, a tremendous benefit of a, open source is um uh, you know, you you never have to stop working on on uh, on developing. Just you know, people leave jobs all the time and so forth. But um, all the um, all the the knowledge and experience is still there. Yep, you know that from experience as well. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so um, I I guess that gets to the the final thing, final question. Um. Well, we'll see, I guess. But um, <laughs> uh, you you already talked about multi-content revisions. Are there any other uh, features or improvements that you're looking you're looking forward to in uh, MediaWiki, and I guess in core MediaWiki? I mean, um, I know there's just a ton of uh, of backlog of uh, you know the the boring stuff that that's that's very important. But uh, you know, as far as um, uh, you know, as far as well, new features or or that kind of thing. You know, as I said, right now we're at the sort of the early part um, of defining um, the strategy for the next few years of MediaWiki. 
And so there are a number of topics that are in very active development, but or active discussion. But, um, the, you know, the, that's. Um, yeah. And you mentioned at the developer summit that there was a session on architecture and there are a number of notes. And yeah, maybe we can post a link to that as well. Um, the notes of that session. There's very active discussion about the future of the MediaWiki platform, and it's a, sort of a wide ranging discussion. So um, rather than try and co cover all aspects yeah. of that here, <laughs> um, j just to say that, yes, we're very much looking at um, at the evolution of the platform over the next three to five years and that that um, that discussion takes into account. Um, you know, the scaling issues of, of Wikipedia, you know, so making sure that any architectural decisions work to scale for the massive side, size of, of Wikipedia, but that also that, that, um, the needs, um, and use of, of third party users of the media software are considered as well. Um, you know, those are both considerations within, um, these discussions. So, um, that's that's I'd say one of the the largest um, things that that we're that we're looking at that um, to keep an eye on you know to follow on your radar. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah. Actually, I saw I saw something about I, I guess it's sort of, sort of a long term discussion about um, um, rewriting Parsoid, which is the current Node.js based. Yeah. Uh, there's two MediaWiki has two parsers for uh, for some reason I don't, I don't exactly know why Parsoid is used by Visual Editor potentially would be used by by MediaWiki but on the other hand there's a um, there's a discussion about changing Parsoid to to just be in PHP and I guess become the the MediaWiki parser for everything if I understand mm -hmm. it correctly yes yeah you do yeah the idea is to to um, eliminate the code duplication. And, um, you know, make sure that there's only one code base to, um, to maintain and also make sure that there's, isn't, um, different behavior depending upon, um, which parser your particular use case is, is engaged with. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the key features. Another of, of, that's being looked at. Um, and the question is, can, can that be done and still, um, maintain the, the performance, the responsiveness that visual editor enjoys. Right. Um, so that's, that's one of the key features. Another one is, um, customizing the API or, or, you know, um, evolving the, the MediaWiki API. Um, there's a REST based API as well as the action API. And to, um, in some sense, unify that to make sure that there is a well defined API. And that it can be used for um, supporting a different a, a number of different um, possible front ends. You know, there's um, a lot of energy um, towards having a fully functional mobile front end for MediaWiki, and um, and right. to be able to edit well in that environment to use a full range of different types of functions, um, and to have um, you know responsiveness. Um, that, you know, that will involve some, um, some work and some evolution of the API. So that's, that's one of the yeah. other big key features of this architectural, um, new architectural strategy and design. Ah, very good. Well, yeah, yeah, mobile support. That's, uh, that's as hot a topic as it gets. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's, a lot of people feel that that's the future of, of, um, interaction. So. Yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, we'll see how, how, uh, how well people can, uh, you know, add references on Wikipedia on their, uh, on their iPhones. On their phones, uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, very good. Uh, this has been, uh, a, a, a really, uh, great discussion. And then, and, and, uh, I guess that, that wraps it up for us. Great. I've enjoyed uh, it as well. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Cindy. You're welcome. This has been Between the Brackets, Episode 1. Thanks again to my guest, Cindy Chickalese. See you next time. <laughs>